I heard that Java is an object oriented language. What does that mean? You make your objects and you start and you code with them. Like you you make a blueprint of what you want your So like you said, you want to have a person. So you want to make your own object so you know exactly what type of person you want, like what do you want from that person? And then so forth. If you want if you're like doing an order, you want like food. So you have like certain types of things. So you're you defining want. types and containers on your own. Yes. And then manipulating them. There you go. There we go. Thanks. Exactly what I was saying. Anyone want to <laughs> adjust what Lexi said? Disagreements? Agreements? Agreements? Agreements. There's some good agreement going on. Yeah. Look at that. All right. So our job today, we just made donut objects and we printed them out last time. How many of you got a chance to work on the mini project um, for this lesson where you were making... Uh, different types of foods. For example, I suggested you could make a salad. And your salad could have... Boolean contained nuts, the lettuce type, whether or not it's vegetarian. Did anyone give that a shot? I just want to turn it in. Great. What, what were your new objects? I was doing Mexican food again. Great. Good. So we got some... What, was your object Mexican food or was it a particular entree? Um, I think it was burritos. A burrito. Good. Big potato burritos. What did you make? Back then, I know you two were doing it. Pizza. Yeah, you had a pizza. You had a pizza yeah. on yours. Hamza, what did you make? Pizza. Wow, the variety is stunning. What would be a traditional food from Pakistan to make an object of? But today, I'm gonna, I gave you the blueprint for an object called a creature. This is where Lexi will be able to create a species. You, Clyde is what? Clyde or Clyde? Clyde. Clyde. What's Clyde? Clyde is a gecko. So we'll be able to make uh, animals and then feed them donuts. Again, this is not silly. This is a chance to do something that our brain is very familiar with. We can imagine animals eating stuff. And then in object-oriented design, we will do more um, business-oriented objects. So step one is to set up your workspace. And then step two is to code up your creature. And if you finish coding the creature, see if you can write some of the guts. Um, based on what we think that should happen in those methods. So once you've got this coded up, we will come back together and we will code up some of the guts because we want to be able to feed a donut to a creature. The most important method on our creature is public and eat donut. What type, what are we going to feed this method? The input is going to be a what? An object. We're going to make an object called the sized donut, meaning that the donut knows its diameter. And we're going to get to make animals picky eaters, which will be kind of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. You're going to have fun, I promise. Okay, set up and uh, creature. Let's do that. The fun thing about object-oriented Java is that it lends itself to diagrams that our brains happily like. So, we start with uh, we, we can draw object diagrams one of two ways. We can draw them the technically correct way, which would be in the universal markup language way. So I want you to try this together because this is what you'll see for the rest of your Java career. So uh, we're going to, if this is your paper, your 8.5 by 11 paper, um, let's make our little UML diagrams up here. So we're going to have two classes what are the two uh, blueprint classes we just made? Creature. Creature. Capital or lowercase? Capital. Capital. And? Size donut. Size donut, okay. So this would take up like half of your page. So that's a little overview of your paper. So what do we put in our, our diagram? Creature. The idea here is that if you just saw this diagram, you would have a good idea of what this object does. Without even looking at the code, we want to be able to transmit ideas about how we designed our object using a standard notation that everyone else can, can understand. It helps us communicate with other people about our code. So on the top box is the name of the, the class name. What goes in the middle box? I've already drawn one of these today. Couldn't hear you? Uh, we put methods down here. Yeah. So methods go down here. Remember, we're trying to say, here's our class. 
What is in this class? What does this object do? We want to describe our creature in simple form. That's our goal here. So remember, objects do and they know. That's it. They know things in their member variables and they do things in their... Yes, Brody's got it. Brody answered this last time. You've got to have this in your bones, in your soul. The only thing you will ever see in a class are member variables and then things that do something to the member variables. That's it. Objects are containers for data and then code that does something with the data. So our creature knows what about itself? It knows its name. Please write with me. I just want you to get in the habit of knowing how the code translates to the diagram because guess what will happen eventually? You will only get a what? Diagram. The diagram. Right? So I'm, we're going backwards so that at some point in the future you can go from diagram to Java. Once again, if you get a job coding, you will get things like this and they will say, make me this class. If you have a fun job, they'll let you do that. Uh, and then you have to go and code it. So it knows its name. What else do our creatures know? Species. It knows its own species. Ooh, let me show you a hint. Where could you cheat? I keep asking, oh, cheating is not a good word. Where could you get a quick reference if I keep bugging you about these things? What's down here? Look at this in your navigator. Does everyone have that in NetBeans? You can get there by going up to, oh no, I have to record. I'm going to remember this at some point. Okay, you can come up to NetBeans and go to Window. You want to go to Navigator. Control 7 will get you there as well. Everyone's got your Navigator? So notice, look what it did so nicely for us. It knows how to read Java. So these are the... Oh, come on, read them. They're what? Yes, because their names are what? So remember variables. They sound like what? what they yes, what they do. Eat donut, that's an action. Get bite size and percent, that's something that we would do with the object. Member variables are here. Now I want to do a quick review. Some of these have a little lock. Why did it do a lock? Private. Private, meaning can any class get at bite size and percent? No. No, you have to go through what kind of door? A method door. So this is kind of a neat thing. Let me just diagram this for a second. If it's private, most likely we need what pair of things? We can think about it like a house. Okay, if you have a special bedroom that you want to protect, you have something in that bedroom, like you store your gold in that bedroom. My brother always wanted to buy gold and put it under his bed. Um, but that's, the, that's the investment. So if you have something hidden in your class, it doesn't mean no one can get at it. It just means that you are going to control what goes in and out of that container through public methods. So look, this is bite size and percent. So what we're saying is, this particular creature, a turtle, only eats 25% of a donut at a time. If it's a bear, it might eat 100% of donut at a time. Why would we want to control setting our bite size? What is an illogical bite size? Negative. A negative bite size. So in other words, I don't just want, I don't want the user to be able to slap any old number in this integer container. I want them to do what? Call a method, look, set. Set bite size in percent. What goes into this method? Whatever the bite size is, you want this creature to take. And this method is going to have to be intelligent and do some logic to control when it's going to actually put that value into byte size. So we're going to code up some of these methods together because it'll create an object that not only has data, but it can manage its own data in a smart way. Now, what if we want to see what the donut's byte size, or the creature's byte size is? We would call what method? Get what? So in other words, these are paired. This member variable, byte size and percent, has two methods, one for retrieving the data and one for
putting the data in, like setting up your little magic creature. Okay, so our next step here uh, is to write the guts for these methods that are going to influence how we set up our creature. And we're going to make the creature and then feed him a donut. So let's continue with this. String name, string species, we can just go down this list, right? Yeah, now it is generally the case, if you are looking at this diagram, should we put these private members up here? Why not? Yeah, so who won't ever get to use them? Yeah, what do we call the people using our class? Lawyers. Lawyers have clients, the client class. So we're going to make creature land over here eventually that will actually make our donuts. But for now, we want to only list the public members and then the methods. So I have a method eat donut and it takes in what value? If our creature is going to eat a donut, it needs a what? Not quite. It needs an entire what? A donut. A donut that has a size. Okay. So eat donut has an input type of sized donut. And we can name, we can label this input variable anything we want like D okay what else do we have on here get byte size and percent so we would write out these methods that's the idea of our blueprint class here okay so let's try this let's try a little bit of coding 